anyway, let me um, ask you this then. So is the irregularity near or is it far? Uh, and, and if it is near or far, uh, how far or near is it? And how do we estimate where it is? Well, if, if we believe, as Ray Kurzweil says, that the technological singularity might happen in 2045, the energularity is still farther down the road because um, with the current amount of energy, we can actually reach the technological singularity. Um, but I think um, it would take maybe half a century more to go from the singularity to the energularity. So by the beginning of next century, the 22nd century, we will be reaching, um, you know, the energularity. And again, it makes sense because that is the point when we will massively begin the colonization of outer space, I think. This will begin in the end of this 21st century, but it will go into big, big uh, stream in the 22nd century. So in your own estimate, it's about 100, a year, uh, 100 years or so off from where we are at today. Yes. Actually, some people think it might be a bit farther down the road, maybe 200, 300 years. But I disagree because, again, this is accelerating. Like so many things are happening faster and faster. So I don't think it is 200 years. I think it is 100 years at the latest. Uh, again, um, but the other thing, uh, we will reach this um, energularity not only through solar power, but also through you know, nuclear uh, energy conversion using Einstein's equation, E equals M times C squared. We will actually be using energy at that moment in 100 years, not just from solar power, but from mass to energy conversion. Where does fusion fit into the energularity? Okay, actually, well, fusion is the way the sun or the stars make their energy, right? So we will use fusion to uh, power some of our uh, interstellar uh, spacecraft to travel uh, from our um, uh, solar system into other uh, solar systems and other galaxies eventually. So we will probably use some uh, fusion power in our um, space shifts. So, uh, to go back again, for you, the moment of irregularity would be the moment that we become a type 1 civilization according to the Kardashev scale? That is, That's right. That is the, the, the lightmost test that we have uh, mastered the control of resources uh, uh, within our planet. That, that's right. And again, to, to give a number to this, that is about 100 to 200 petawatts of power. Actually, we are talking about power. Power and energy are not exactly the same. There is a time factor that connects them. But uh, talking about power, it is between 100 and 200 petawatts. A peta is 10 to the 15. So it's a, a very large number. Uh, right now, human civilization is at about 15 terawatts, 15 terawatts, a terawatt is 10 to the uh, 12. So from we are going to go from 15 terawatts to about 100 to 200 petawatts. And this will happen in a century. Wow, that's, that's really flabbergasting kind of a progress and shift. Uh, so, so to translate that, that kind of picture, that kind of vision, from the sort of uh, physical measurement, uh, would you describe that context of the irregularity? What, if you had a time machine and you were able to go 100 years down the road, what would you see in the context of the irregularity? How would we know that we have arrived there? Well, that's an excellent uh, question. Like, uh, how will we know when we have reached the technological singularity. You know, it's not going to be exactly in 2045, as Ray Kurzweil uh, says, probably. Or when will we reach the methuselarity, this uh, longe longevity escape velocity of living long um, to live um, forever. Uh, so when we will reach 100 to 200 petawatts of energy, it depends on so many things. It depends on how much space activities we do. I mean, uh, humanity and 
post-humanity. I have to emphasize this. It's not just humans, but it will be a whole robotic civilization and cyborg civilization that we will be fusioned with us. We are fusioning with our technology. And again, um, it is not just humans. It will be transhumans, post-humans, cyborgs, and robots that will colonize the rest of the solar system. And for that, again, we need incredible amounts of energy reaching 100 to 200 petawatts and um, it's going to be a very interesting road a very winding uh, path we are going to take into the future well some people have pointed out that one of the easiest ways to explain why the SETI program has not returned any positive contacts with an extraterrestrial intelligent civilization yet must be the possibility or the, 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 the high probability of civilization-wide extinction. And some people point that the most likely, the most vulnerable period that this phenomenon can occur and probably does occur is the moment when such a civilization goes to stage one or from stage one to stage two. Uh, uh, civilization on the Kardashev scale. So how vulnerable do you think we are during that highly transitional and highly volatile process? And how likely are we to survive it? Excellent question, uh, because we are living in the most uh, incredible times in um, human history. We have enough uh, technology to destroy our civilization. We have managed not to do it and um, I think we will manage to move into the next phase of humanity and post-humanity but again we have to be aware that with nuclear weapons soon with bio weapons with nano weapons and with energy weapons we can destroy our civilization and that is also why I strongly believe uh, that we have to leave our cradle planet we have to leave Earth. We have to go into other planets. We have to diversify our egg basket to go into other planets. But again, uh, let me tell you, even though the scenario could be the total destruction of humanity and life on this planet, you know, I am optimist. I am optimist. And I think we have to be optimistic about the future because that is what the future is about. Uh, Sir Arthur C. Clarke who was one of the greatest science fiction writers ever. He said that many of these things are self-fulfilling prophecies. If we believe that we self-destroy ourselves, we will probably self-destroy ourselves. But if we believe that we will overcome all these problems, that we will transform our civilization into a type one, a type two, a type three civilization, then we will probably do it. So I also think this is a self-fulfilling prophecy that we will survive, that we will move ahead, that we will move onward, that we will move upward, that we will move outward. This is fantastic, uh, but uh, I would like to push you a little bit further on that point because I'm always surprised by the answer that people give me. For example, I mean, Ray Kurzweil is often criticized for being too optimistic about our chances to survive the technological singularity. Um, and just one example, I think I interviewed Michael Anisimov uh, from the Singularity Institute, and he told me that he's also an optimist like you, but when I ask him to give a mathematical measure or percentage of our chances of surviving and overcoming the technological singularity, he said something like 2% which totally shocked me. So if I press you to give a mathematical or, or a percentage probability uh, to us surviving the technological singularity, what would that be in your estimate? Well, I would say 99% or maybe more. Um, actually, let me tell you uh, Machiavelli. Machiavelli, also a very famous uh, Italian uh, a political scientist, intellectual, writer, whatever. You know, he actually said that most of humanity is good. And uh, I believe that too. Most of humanity and post-humanity will be good. Um, we do have some rotten apples in, in humanity, but they are very few and they are far between each other. So I think they will not have enough power to destroy civilization because the good ones are the majority. And we will 
overcome the rotten apples of civilization. So, again, I, I also think, you know, in evolu evolutionary terms that um, um, things keep on getting better and better and better. So I think um, our descendants, humans and non-humans, will probably live in a better world. And the probability of this improving will continue. Because the more we know, the more we understand, uh, the, the better things become. So I keep on being very optimistic, and I give no more than 1% for the destruction of our civilization at this stage. Well, let me ask you this then, because you mentioned that you believe that our uh, descendants would live in a better world. But what are our own chances to see that world for our own selves with our own eyes? I mean, uh, some of your colleagues at Singularity University, such as Aubrey de Grey, are working on uh, longevity escape velocity and uh, achieving the metacellularity that you've already mentioned. You have others such as uh, Daniel Kraft, who is the head of the Future Med program there, who bring together a number of cutting edge experts in, from that field who often make similar arguments. So what, in your opinion, is our chances of us witnessing this ourselves? Well, when I said our descendants, that includes us. We will be our own descendants. Um, but let me tell you, um, I do think that we will reach physical immortality in two fronts. One on the biological front, because in the next 20 years, we will be able to replace any organ of the body. And not only replace, but improve biologically any organ of the body. So we will be, if you want to put it this way, biologically immortal. But also, we will become computationally immortal. All the information that we have in our brains, and that information includes feelings, love, stories, and memories, and all of that, will be able to upload that into a computer or a machine, also by the singularity in 2045. So I do think we will be computationally and biologically immortal in the next 20 to 30, and at the latest in 40 years from now. And I do plan to be alive by then. So I do hope to be part of that first generation of immortals. <laughs> so, I mean, those are famous last words, but I, 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 I have similar, I cherish similar hopes like you, but those are famous last words. So that, that makes me laugh sometimes. I mean, Marcus Aurelius said once that, Death smiles at us all. The only thing we can do is smile back. Uh, but um, I cherish similar hopes to you, as I said. Anyway, so, so we are going to live forever. We're going to have unlimited energy resources, um, which would allow us in turn to conquer the universe eventually. So what should we do then? Should we just sit on our couches and, and play games and watch TV all, 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 day, all day long? Or... Is there something that we should do? Should we just sit and wait for the singularity to happen? Well, no, because, uh, again, if we don't work towards that, it might not happen because there is a, a small but, but a real uh, pos probability that it might not happen, not just the singularity, but then, therefore, not even the energularity. So we do have to work towards that. Um, and uh, also because it is exciting, it is fascinating. I enjoy everything I do. And I think, um, you know, the world is becoming more exciting, more interesting. Things are happening faster. You know, I wish I, I, I could already amplify my mind, you know, in order to read more, to do more things. Also to amplify my body, you know, I could be in at least three different places in one moment. I would love to do that, to upload my brain in different uh, robots or cyborgs, whatever. So uh, anyway, uh, just to put it um Short, I think we have to work towards the most incredible transition of humanity. You know, this, this is so exciting uh, because also we are conscious of it. It is not like when we evolved from apes, you know, we were not really that conscious of what might have been happening. I, I, at least I don't think so. But now we are aware of it. We are aware of all this technology that is improving us and improving the conditions of um, humanity in general. So I call this conscious evolution. As opposed to uh, um, biological evolution, which is by trial and error, this conscious 
evolution is based on technology. It's based on design. We actually create the evolution we want to see, and we are conscious of it. So it, it's very different from what happened before, and I'm very optimistic, and it is very exciting, and it is happening in 20, 30, 40 years, and we should be alive by then.